everyone my name is mini sethi i hope you all are staying healthy today we are going to talk about keynesian theory of income and employment this theory completely depend on effective demand or we can say that effective demand play very important role in this theory and effective demand is determined by two factors first two factor is aggregate demand price or we can say the aggregate demand function in short adf and second factor which determined effective demand is aggregate supply supply price or we can say that aggregate supply function in short asf first of all we will talk about what is aggregate demand price and what is aggregate supply price what is aggregate demand price aggregate demand price is total amount of money that all organization expect to receive from the sale of output that is produced by specific number of workers aggregate demand price is total amount of money that all organization expect to receive from the sale of output that is produced by specific number of workers for example there are 100 workers and output produced by them is 1000 unit and organization expect to receive from the sale of these 1000 unit is 50000 rupees and this 50000 rupees we call aggregate demand price employer expectation increase from the sale of output employment will also increase as employer expectation increase from the sale of output employment will also increase or we can say that as aggregate demand price increase employment will also increase means aggregate demand price and employment both have a positive relation in this diagram you can see on x axis we have employment and y axis we have aggregate demand price as aggregate demand price is increasing our employment employment is also increasing so we can say that aggregate demand price and employment both have a positive relation okay so this is our aggregate demand function curve in short we can say the adf curve we are going to talk about aggregate supply price so what is aggregate supply price aggregate supply price is total amount of money that all organizations must be received from the sale of output that is produced by specific number of workers so aggregate supply price total amount of money that all organizations must be received from the sale of output that is produced by specific number of workers for example here we have 100 workers and output produced by them is 1000 unit and organization wages cost for hiring these 100 workers is 35000 organization must be received these 35000 rupees from the sale of output that is produced by these 100 workers if organization is not able to receive 35000 from the sale of output that is produced by these 100 workers then employer employer will not hire more employees even they will terminate their existing employees that's why employer must be received this minimum amount from the sale of output that is produced by this 100 workers and this 35000 unit that organization must be received it's called aggregate supply price we will see aggregate supply price with the help of this diagram in this diagram on x axis we have employment and y axis we have aggregate supply price as we earlier discussed aggregate supply price is the amount that organizations must to be received otherwise they will not hire more employees even they will terminate their existing employees so we can say that as aggregate supply price increase employment also increase as aggregate supply price fall employment also fall in this diagram you can see as aggregate supply price is increasing our employment is also increasing and this is our asf curve or we can say the aggregate supply function curve you can see here after this even point our aggregate supply function curve become vertical why why after even point our this curve become vertical because even is full employment point at this point all labor are fully employed after this point more labor are not available in economy or we can say that after even point those people are not available who want to work at existing wage rate but are not able to find work so even is full employment point where all people are fully employed after even point more labor is not available
As we earlier discussed, effective demand play very important role in this theory. Now we are going to talk about determination of effective demand with the help of this diagram. In this diagram on x-axis we have employment and y-axis we have aggregate demand price and aggregate supply price. Or we can say that on y-axis we have receipts. Now what is effective demand? Effective demand is a point where your aggregate supply function is equal to aggregate demand function. Please listen carefully effective demand is a point where our aggregate supply function is equal to aggregate demand function in this diagram adf is aggregate demand function and asf is aggregate supply function at this e point aggregate demand aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function so we can say that e point is effective demand point but this e point is not full employment point our full employment point is e1 at this e point only o and workers is employed but for full employment we require O N1 worker. So N N1 is involuntary unemployment or we can say that N N1 people want to work at existing wages but are not able to find work. According to this theory, cause of unemployment is fall in aggregate demand. According to this theory, cause of unemployment is fall in aggregate demand. Because when aggregate demand fall, output fall, output fall employment also fall. So in, by increasing aggregate demand, we can increase output and employment. Aggregate demand is equal to C plus I. Here A D is aggregate demand, C is consumption expenditure, I is investment expenditure. At short time period, consumption remains constant. But at short time period, we cannot change our consumption. But we can change our investment. So by increasing investment, we can increase our aggregate demand. But now problem is that our aggregate demand is already very low, means market is very down. At this time period, private sector will not invest because their main motive is profit. That's why government intervention is must. This theory gives so much importance to government. In this time period, government must invest. When government increases their investment, our aggregate demand increases. As aggregate demand increases, output and employment also also increase. So when government increase their investment, our ADF curve shift forward and new ADF curve is ADF say 1. Now economy reach at this E1 point. At this E1 point is a full employment point. At this point those people who want to work at existing visit are able to find the work. E1 is our full employment point. Here all labor are fully employed. This is all about Keynesian theory of income and employment. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.